Hey everybody, welcome back to patch 8.2. I didn't forget about Zin Zhao. He's getting his Dark Harvest Guide just like Udyr and Jax. So if you've seen the other guides, you know that this keystone rewards an early lead with extremely hard snowballing potential. If you start to get a lead early, it doesn't take very long to be able to 100-0 squishies with fast burst damage combo using back-to-back -back auto attack resets. We'll have one auto attack reset from our Q and one from our Titanic Hydra. Building a lot of early burst damage helps you get an early snowball rolling if you don't make any huge mistakes. And this rune ensures that you stay strong into the late game and continue to endlessly scale up your burst damage the longer the game lasts. Just like on Udria and Jax, we're going to be rushing the Tiamat for the early clear speed and burst damage. Which means at level 1 we're going to start with a rejuvenation bead to save some money. And then after the Tiamat, you can choose between two different jungle items. I would recommend taking either Blue Smite Warrior or Red Smite Bloodraiser. I would go for a Warrior if you're against a very squishy enemy team, and if you do choose Warrior, I think Blue Smite is better because the idea is if you're against a bunch of squishies, you're going to be able to maybe 3-shot them and you just need to be able to catch them once and they'll be dead. So the Chilling Smite helps you with that, but if you're against a more tanky enemy team that you can't really burst down in one combo, you're not going to be able to really kill the tanks after you use your initial Dark Harvest proc, so you need the Blood Razor just for the tanks if the enemy team is tanky. If you built Warrior, you always want to get your Trinity Force second item, because you need some attack speed in this build to make it work, which we don't have from the runes with this build, because Dark Harvest is in the Domination Tree. But if you are going for Blood Razor, you probably don't want to get Trinity Force at all, because that would be too much attack speed and not enough AD. You wouldn't have any burst damage. If you got Blood Razor, you would probably want to get a Death Stance instead of Trinity Force, for that 80 attack damage. And then the Titanic Hydra, that gives you an auto attack reset, which you could actually use in your burst damage combo to make your knockup come faster. After activating your Q, as you probably know, you have to attack three times to get your knockup. So in that time period, if you use your Titanic Hydra as an auto attack reset, you can reduce the duration of time and get your knockup faster before your slow even wears off. And as you probably saw in the beginning of the video, that's pretty much all it takes to kill a squishy champion. But let's say, for you, that's not enough. If you want some more damage, you want to be able to one-shot even more tanky people, well, in that case, you have a few different options. So the Sterex Gauge is sort of a well-rounded option here. If you have a Trinity Force, the Sterex Gauge is going to increase your Trinity Force procs. And it also makes you a little bit more tanky with the health. But it's kind of expensive, and if you're not extremely fed, at this point in the game, you're not going to have a lot of armor or magic resist. So it could end up being too squishy of a build if you're not very fed. And then for the other options, if you are kind of fed and you notice the enemy team is like 4 magic champions or 4 physical damage champions, you can counter build against that by building either a guardian angel for the armor or a maw of Malmordius for the magic resist. If you don't want any more extra damage in the late game, just choose some health and magic resist or armor like Randuin's, Deadman's, or Spear Visage. By the way, Spear Visage also increases your healing which is really good on Zen Zhao, especially with Death's Dance. For the primary tree, it's going to be just like Jax because we have a dash ability. So we're going to use Sudden Impact because that's going to give us more damage overall than Cheap Shot. The lethality that we get is going to increase our burst damage from all sources including our Dark Harvest proc. Then after that, Eyeball Collection for the damage and Relentless Hunter for the out of combat movement speed so we can try to assassinate targets. Then for the secondary tree, there's only one really good option I think because you need this attack speed from the Legend Alacrity and also taking Triumph. It gives you a lot more survivability, and after you get a kill, not only are you getting a reset on your Dark Harvest burst damage, but you're getting more health, and you can sometimes go on a chain reset spree and get a lot of kills. Alright, for the gameplay, I'm going to show you two different games. The first game is going to use Warrior, Trinity Force, Titanic Hydra, and the second game is going to use actually no attack speed items, so you can see the difference. Warrior, Death's Dance, Titanic Hydra. So for the first clear with Zin Zhao, I like to always start with Bot Lane, whichever buff that might be. Start level 1 with E, then level 2 W, and try to hit all the wolves with both of the area of effects. So just doing the usual level 3 route to get all three of our abilities with double buffs and then go for an aggressive play, either a gank or an evade. So ganks are top priority, but if the enemies are not very pushed, or if I don't think I'm going to be able to get that champion, if they have a dash ability, then I just invade the jungle. So here we found the Nelly very low health, could not finish off that blue buff, but we got the soul. She gets away. I thought I was going to be able to finish her off right there. And then the mid lane comes over to try to fight me. And I know these guys are squishy. Here comes the squishy top lane Lucian. 
So I decided to focus him down first because I can get that Dark Harvest reset. He had less health than Akali. Here comes Nidalee. So I'll just step out of her burst damage and then jump back in when my Eve comes back off cooldown. And that's a lot of Dark Harvest resets. And that's exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the runes with all the resets and going on killing sprees. People just completely underestimate all of that. People never see this stuff in ranked. They don't understand how it works. And they don't expect it. So then I just do a little bit of farming, kill the last things over here, the raptors and krugs. Then I try to gank top, but he's not pushed enough, so then it's time to try mid lane, because that's our last option. So there's no way I was going to get this Akali, but it looked like she was kind of scared after that incident a minute ago. So she wasted flash right there to get away. And then I just walk right back in, jump on her with E, Q, and I like to start with Q before W, because I max W. And I don't want to risk missing the W. So I start with a knock up and then only right after I knock up the person, then I hit him with the W so I can never miss. So we got the enemy cannon soul. Now let's push our cannon minion into tower so it dies. And by the way, towers focus cannon minions first. And then we can get another four stacks from our cannon minion. And then finally go back to base. I would not recommend staying away from base with this much money, but I just had a double buff reset and I figured I could get away with doing it and it paid off for me but usually it doesn't pay off if you do that then my blue's about to spawn so let's start with raptors and move to wolves and by this time blue's gonna be up we can just use all our mana while farming because it's gonna regenerate now and then let's go for kill in bot lane because their ADC is out of mana and low health and that bard's pretty squishy also so I see the bard pushed way up so I see the opportunity to run in here and ult him back into the wall and then we burst him down, get a plus six stacks, and then we take the cannon minion too before leaving. So you can always try to time your ganks when the cannon minions are there. If you really want to put in the effort to be very efficient with Dark Harvest, you can practice ganking every single time the cannon minion is in the lane and farming when they're not. Because then if you get a kill, you can kill the enemy cannon, get that soul, and then push your wave into the tower. And that puts us over 100 stacks. So let's leave one more ward over here to make sure none of the enemies are going to show up while I steal this red buff. Grab a wave of minions as we're passing through. Another cannon. And Nidalee knows I'm here, but I'm just going to steal these wolves from right in front of her. From right under her nose. And here she comes. She's going to chase me away. So this fight, I just started with a W because I had a feeling she wasn't going to dodge it. I had a feeling she was going to engage on me. So I just hit her with a slow to start that and hit her with another slow for my E. And start Q at the same time. And she's just dead right there. And I guess sometimes the ability order just doesn't really matter if you're fed enough. So we see each other ward, and then I see her run downwards. So I run over here thinking she's going to walk around this corner. And she did, but I missed my ult a little bit too far. It's not going to be a problem, though. I just used my flash to finish that knock up on her, get that Dark Harvest reset, and burst down the Lucian. That's two kills on top. Let's run to mid lane now. There's two enemies there. Me and Pantheon are going to try to flank these guys. Bard flashes away. Akali comes back in, and we burst her down one more cannon soul right there. So let's go back to base, finish our 20 force and Joram's fist. So our clear speed just got a lot better now because we were lacking in attack speed before. So as we're leaving base, just take a few camps, Raptors, Red, and Krugs, then take Scuttle, and then move into the enemy jungle. See if it's trying to get this wolf, and then Nidalee gets that last hit. But we found the Akali over here, I just jumped on top of her and burst her down. Now, I attacked her twice in Q, but didn't use my knockup there, so when Lucian jumps back towards me, I can use my E to gap close and have the knockup already ready. So we do that, he gets knocked up, and he's dead. Then I go back to base, that's enough for me to finish the Titanic Hydra, so we get another auto attack reset now. It's going to make our burst damage much faster, and we also got Merc Treads. So I'll check in my rune information, notice I have an unclaimed bounty on Varus, it's my last one. So I was running down here, got to get that last stack. Start with the E. Flash isn't going to save you, man. Finish him off with a W. And we got five claimed bounties. Let's just push this lane really hard and see how far we can get. So much damage to towers. But all the enemies are missing on the map and they're about to show up. So after we kill the tower, had to back off a little bit, but then I assessed the situation and I think, well, I can probably just burst down the squishy Nidalee. So I was going for the flash ult over the spear to dodge a spear. Again, was just barely not close enough to get that ult. 
but we still just finish her off real fast in a couple hits. And that's going to be an easy inhib. Here again, attack the inhib twice, but then use a third hit to knock up the Varus I got slept by Zoe. Then Nidalee and Lucian are trying to finish me off. Try to dodge that Lucian damage, and then I get a shield, jump back in, burst down the sky with a Q, W. Not even enough time to get my three auto attacks on him. So I'm going to slow this play down to point out a few things. So when you're attacking structures, you can eat a minions to increase your attack speed for five seconds. And you should always do that whenever there's an enemy wave near you. And then here, activate Q, attack the inhib twice. So my knockup is primed. And when I see Zoe land the sleep, I know I'm going to go for that Varus. But before that, I run at the enemies. You can see my cursor's on Varus. But I'm just running at these guys to kind of scare them so they don't try to fight me. Just for a couple seconds, they run away. That's all the time I need to burst down the Varus. Varus respawns, and here's an example of the fastest possible burst damage combo you can do. So right after your E, you do one attack immediately, and then right after that, auto attack reset with Q, and then auto attack reset with a Titanic Hydra. In a period of like half a second, you're attacking three times, and you're getting a lot of burst damage from your Sheen proc, your Q damage, your Titanic Hydra proc, and of course the massive Dark Harvest proc. And that's why it's pretty easy to one-shot the Squishy Champions in the late game. And guys, this game is just about over. So let's move on to the second game where I built Warrior and Death's Dance instead of Trinity Force. So you can see the difference without the attack speed item. Same first clear, starting with bot lane, getting our level 3. So we can get double buffs and all three abilities and go for an aggressive play. This time I decided to gank the low health Diana. And as I was running through the lane, I can pick up this Cannon Minion Soul to get that Dark Harvest reset. A couple more stacks. Q. Then after the Q knock up, that's when we use our W. So we don't miss. So let's just leave a ward over here and start stealing these Krugs. And when I see the Diana return to lane, I'm going to try to kill that Diana again. So I made a mistake here by using E to start that because I was already behind her. So I should have just started with Q. And then I would have still had two more slows to use to catch up to her. So I think I would have killed her if I didn't waste my E at the beginning. But let's just grab this Cannon Minion Soul. That's enough for our important items, the Tiamat and Basic Boots. Because that's going to give us more mobility and more clear speed in the jungle. So we can farm faster and gank faster. Tiamat, of course, is good for more than just farming. It's also good for the burst damage for the ganks. So after we leave base before ganking, let's pick up one buffed auto attack from the Raptors right here. And then try to gank this top lane now. And after knock up, then W. Try to damage the tower a little bit. Enemy jungler shows up. What are you gonna do, Rengar? Not much. Just like last game, let's put another control ward in this bush next to red buff. Steal some raptors. Then, uh, as I was trying to gank this mid lane, I noticed the enemy Rengar walking right past my wards. And since he was low health, I just decided to flash E. And since I didn't have enough time to attack him three times, to get the knockup, I just went for the early W, and it worked out. Then I killed my Raptors and Krugs, and then Red Buff, and look what I found in the enemy jungle again, the Blue Buff. So we leave a ward over this wall, so we can see if anybody's about to show up, and steal the wolves also. So here, the Rengar is two levels down, so I just decided to try to burst him down. This time, got my knockup and W, and he's dead. Got his flash as well. So... It's a good time to take out this Rift Herald, and I'm just going to give that to my top laner. I am fed enough already. So that's enough money to finish our Warrior, and to start off the Death's Dance, I'm going to start with a Pickaxe. By the way, if you go Blood Razor in Death's Dance, it might be better to get that Pickaxe before the Blood Razor. So the build order would be Tiamat, Pickaxe, and then Blood Razor. Otherwise, you're not going to have very much burst damage without very much AD. So here, I saw the enemy ADC killing my control ward that I left in that bush, so I knew that she was walking over this direction, so I waited for her to get close and started with the W for the slow, then the E slow, and she's dead in just a couple attacks. Steal this red buff once again, steal the Krugs. There's a pretty big wave of minions down bot lane, so let's grab that. Then I was just going back to mid lane to do the same thing, grab some minions, but then this ADC went a little bit too far away from her tower, and I saw the opportunity to just turn around and burst her down. And this Orn is up here now, pretty low health, so I take a buffed auto attack from this Gromp to prepare for this gank. I'm going to engage with an ult to stun him against the wall, and then we can just burst him down, and we're already close to the outer edge of the turret, so we can easily walk out of tower range to drop the aggro. And now it's mid lane's turn, so let's run back down here. We show up just in time to get that soul. 
Try to do a little bit of damage to Rengar. But I take a little bit of damage from Tower, so I have to run away. Fizz goes back in, tries to get that kill, but dies. Enemy Twitch flashes to finish me off. But on the bright side, that's going to be just enough for me to finish my death stance before leaving base. So we're going to have a lot of attack damage. Not very much attack speed, but that's what auto attack resets are for. Try this Orn again. So he's a little bit too tanky for us to kill him in one combo, but that's to be expected because he's got a little bit of armor and health. We're still just going to be able to harass him a little bit more, finish him off. Go back to base, that's going to be enough to finish our Titanic Hydra so we can get that auto attack reset. So I'm just going to try to jump on this Twitch here with the auto attack reset combo. E and then Q reset, then Hydra reset. Use ult to knock back the Rengar and block the damage from Misfortune ult. Let's pick up all these souls, all three of these champion souls right here. A bunch of stacks. So here, because I'm pretty fed, I just wanted to go for an aggressive play to see my limits. So I had a feeling I was probably going to die, but I just wanted to see how far I can get. So we got the Misfortune bursted down. And then before I died, I tried to burst down the Rengar. We got that kill also. Got two of them down before they got me. And then I was just building Merc Treads and Frozen Heart. But then, guys, that's just about the end of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video or if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys again next time.